four races remain until the real sim racing series is going into the playoffs it's the full throttle cup series at chicagoland i'm dylan coyle evan about evan pasaka will be joining hopefully in just a few minutes he is dealing with some administrator issues right now behind the scenes but You've got me for the time being. And yes, you heard us right. Chicagoland Speedway is the scene of this four race to go mark in the regular season of the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. It's Chicagoland after a two week break and it's sandwiched in between another two week break. After today, we go to Michigan, then Watkins Glen and Daytona, Daytona International Speedway. It will be a fantastic run of races here, and uh, I cannot wait. Actually, so Watkins Glen has been replaced, I must say. Uh, that graphic uh, is going to actually be Daytona International Speedway's road course that will be the track. So interesting times here. You see the current playoff standings with Sean Callis. He is the man outside looking in. Eric Stanford is in 16th place. Half the field are locked in courtesy of wins. And you can pretty much look at drivers like Joseph Diaz, uh, David Washington, Rhett McBride, Jared Mogard, Thomas J. George. Those are the drivers that you can feel confident about being pretty much in with four races to go. So with all the drivers uh, finishing up their qualifying, around two minutes left before the drivers will be gritting up, we can definitely talk about some past results as well in this series. And just so everyone knows, we've got close to uh, 40 drivers in the field today. So that will be quite the show as we're riding on board with Gary Sexton. Uh, Sexton had a 31 for six time set. And right now he is due to be starting 11th on the grid. We get a uh, shot of his in-car camera running a triple monitor setup. So, and uh, as we go on board with uh, Dang Cruz. Well, that's uh, some fun as he slides into the grass area. A lot of uh, difficulties when you're going to a different mile and a half track from one week to the next. But Brian Chambliss, who is sitting pretty, uh, pretty nicely right now inside the cut line um, by around 30 or so points, he is uh, looks like he's on his flying lap at the moment. Has he set a time so far? It appears that he has but we will see what is able to be done here as this is a two lap qualifying stint and we'll just watch on board 38 seconds left in this qualifying Jambliss is only able to get to 20th place on the grid as time is beginning to wind down. 29 drivers have put in qualifying laps. Uh, pretty much everybody else has declined to do so. We'll go over the grid in just a few moments, but it's pretty much set with 29 qualifiers, so those are the amount of drivers that will be in contention uh, for one of the $5 awards that we do have with the Real Sim Racing uh, uh, Full Throttle Cup Series, which is always a fun thing, that hard charger award and we've got the grid getting up right now. Agno Phillip is starting on pole with Daniel Eberhardt. Won twice here at Chicagoland in the past few seasons. Kyle Kammer will be starting a third. And Bradley Burke in fourth on row number two. Michael Oraya, Kyle Trudell, two drivers who are always running up front. And Andrew Faridaj, obviously, he is one of the top drivers in the field. Sam Nieto starting right alongside him. Grant Davis in ninth, Cole Fralick in 10th, Daniel Scott and Gary Sexton right outside the top 10 in row number six. Thomas George, Scott McClendon, they're starting next to each other with Eric Stanford, one of those drivers that are trying to ensure a place in the playoffs, starts right next to Rhett McBride in row eight. Joseph Theus, Austin Wagner, Liam Sheen, and Brian Chambliss are your top 20. As we can continue going down in the order, you'll start to see some names we have seen a lot of trying to contend for some playoff uh, contention with Matthew Marr, Justin Carey, Adam Benefield, and Sean Callist. That's a, a spot for Callist that he does not want to be in when the checkered flag end up waving. But 
We have the 25th spot starter, John Rodden, with John Fowler. The Battle of the John starting in the same row with Dane Cruz, who you saw spun into the grass on the back straight, and Michael Kaczynski starting in 28th. Tom Morano in 29th. And that's only the drivers who have uh, the, have qualified. The drivers declining to qualify and will be starting uh, by their uh, I rating will be Dylan Jones, David Washington, Shane Parrish, Evan uh, Pisacco. No, it's not him, but he is in the lineup at least as one of the administrators here. Uh, it's Steve Durham, Steve Soa, Michael Moser, Andrew Pellegrini, uh, David Winfield, and Trevin Valderrama. 37 cars in the field in this race tonight and uh i know i am definitely looking forward to this one we'd like to thank you all for joining us on race spot tv's coverage of the real sim racing full throttle uh cup series again my name is dylan Coyle. evan sacco should be joining us shortly uh, but I will be handling the duties for now as the cars start to move away from that starting line and get going for this one pace lap. Remember the starters, Agno Phillip in the 94 car. Now Phillip is going to be starting on pole and that's uh, pretty good for Phillip because if we're talking about him, he is very far off if we're talking about uh, any potential playoff things. Now, he's only raced in one race this season, so unfortunately, he's not going to be eligible for a playoff position. You've got to race in either 10 of the 20 regular season races or get a playoff waiver uh, given a few stipulations, such as finishing the rest of the season. But as we see Mara, Sexton, they're ready to go. And we are too. Pace car heading in off of turn four. It's Phillips grid. Once the pace car goes in, Daniel Eberhardt aside. And green flag is in the air. Agno Phillip will lead off with a very poor jump. Daniel Eberhardt gets to the outside and away we go. 125 laps at Chicagoland. Eberhardt gets into the wall, it seems, and almost lost control of the car, but he's still moving, going around turn four, and he had an incredible jump. Agno Phillip was not ready for that, and we'll have to take a look again at that, see exactly what happened if there was a spin of the tires, but Phillip is getting swarmed right now. Bradley Burke on his outside, out of turn two. He's going to have the momentum on this very curvy back straight. There's really no straight section of Chicago Land Speedway makes it for uh, a very intriguing kind of race. As Phillip moves up a bit into the middle lane, he's now sandwiched and a move is trying to be made on the inside of him in the apron. It's going to be Kyle Trudell taking it three wide down on the white line, his left tires all the way down there and he gets the move done and clears him on lap number three. There is a caution though and a wreck will come out behind. It looks like a two car incident the 83 is involved of Adam Benefield and Justin Carey, the 12. Getting a look at exactly what happened here. You see on this replay, I, I just don't think that uh, Carey saw Benefield right below him, came down, might have been looking to block and Unfortunately, that looks like it's going to be a, uh, a poor uh, incident right there as uh, Justin Carey puts in the driver's chat the letter C, whatever that means. But as the yellow comes out for the first caution of the day on lap three, Daniel Eberhardt will be the leader who has really dominated the early goings of this race. Uh, and I will say for one thing that Eberhardt has been one of the most dominant drivers at Chicagoland Speedway over the last few years of the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series. He 
was that the winner here in both 2016 and uh, in 2000, uh, or excuse me, it was the winner here in 2016 and uh, was the runner up at least in 2018 to Dylan Jones. Jones is another driver who has had incredible success at this track in the season so far as we do have some pit stops. Dylan Jones, we're talking right about him. It's going into the pits. It's never too early to get some uh, fresh tires, a new, uh, a bit of uh, more fuel, especially when you're in the back, never will hurt at all on lap five of 125. But Dylan Jones won in 2017 and 2018, went back to back here last season at Chicagoland. He had a top 10 finish in ninth. Andrew Farina, or Farina uh, took that win as he typically does. But the most interesting thing about that race was just how close it was at the end. Tommy Gossett, 0 .007 seconds. That's seven thousandths of a second. For reference, the uh, two closest finishes in NASCAR history, two thousandths of a second. Twice it happened at Darlington and Talladega. One in 2003, one in 2011. So it was pretty close, to say the least. So Daniel Eberhardt will line up first. The uh, pace lights are still up on the pace car. So at least one more lap of uh, this caution with Kyle Trudell jumping four places in just around three laps to uh, get into second. He'll start on the outside of Eberhardt if that is where uh, he chooses, Eberhardt that is, qualify with a 30.098. And uh, Agnes Phillip, who qualified in first, just 13 hundredths quicker than Eberhardt, is all the way back in fourth. And uh, he had a very poor start to the race. He, Seemed to get the tires uh, rolling a little too much. Couldn't get the traction, the tire into the road surface. But nonetheless, it's uh, not the best place for him to be, especially after getting into pole position. However, he will be starting on the outside of a hard-charging Kyle Trudell. So gives him a little bit of a push, then maybe that could lead to a better situation uh, going. So nonetheless... Uh, one more lap of this caution. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited as the plates are still on, so it seems like we're going for a little bit longer than we all expected here uh, at this mile and a half circuit. We're riding on board with Agno Phillip, the New York native. This final four race stretch is uh, quite exciting, uh, I will say, because of the different types of tracks. Now, we've been at mile and a half speedways for just week or two now, or I guess two weeks if you're going back to Kentucky. Before then were the oddly shaped two and a half milers in Indianapolis and Pocono. And then obviously we had uh, the road course of Sonoma before then. But uh, we're going to have another road course coming up. So if you saw the schedule graphic, uh, that has changed in recent weeks to reflect the real life NASCAR schedule with Watkins Glen being dropped from the calendar this year due to uh, COVID-19 concerns, uh, but the uh, what is going to be coming is the Daytona International Speedway Road Course. Definitely something to uh, be excited about because none of these drivers have probably ever raced at the Daytona Road Course when it comes down to uh, when it comes down to a Cup Series car. Is the Flagman gives the one to go sign, so we'll go back to racing on lap nine after uh, five or six laps of these uh, caution proceedings. Looks like Eberhardt will be on the inside line as he chooses it. Kansas is more of a track where you can get away with being on the outside. It's one of the uh, more, more notable ones. I think it's been helped very much by this package that NASCAR has been using in 
recent years, but Chicago Land is still one of those tracks that if you can get some good positioning on the inside, then uh, you might be better off uh, going in, out, in and out of the turns. And especially um, because of the way this track is shaped on the back stretch, it leads to some more interesting play happening with all the drivers and the shuffling that happens and what goes on. But nonetheless, uh, we're going back to green flag racing after a very lengthy yellow flag. Andrew Pellegrini is uh, two laps down. He's the only driver to be registered as a driver, at least a lap down. But we're getting back to racing here. The pace car peels off. And green flag is back in the air. Daniel Eberhart takes the green and has some momentum once again. Bradley Burke with a great jump on the inside line gets right in front of Trudell and Trudell is struggling. Burkhart sways down to the left. I'm not sure what he's trying to do. Maybe break the draft of some sort, but Burke gets a little bit of a tap from Kyle Kammer behind him. And all of a sudden Kammer restarted in fifth is now trying to go for a third or even second or first place spot. As they go down into turn one, Eberhardt is on the outside with Bradley Burke going for some inside position, trying to take the lead away. He won't clear him coming out of two, however. Man, these drivers, they're right next to each other, almost going three wide, as it appeared that Kyle Kammer was just motioning a little bit too between them. Decides not to go there, probably smart, but he's going to try and go on the outside. He has no drafting help, comes back down to take away any positioning that Kyle Trudell could have gotten. And all of a sudden, when it looked like Daniel Eberhardt was running away with it in the early first three laps of the race, after a long caution, we've got two by two going back three positions on the grid, a battle for first. It's pretty incredible to see how close these drivers are racing early on. I mean, if we're talking about aggression, we really haven't seen this kind of aggression here in the Full Throttle Cup Series in uh, quite a few races. I'm thinking back to maybe uh, Pocono in the very early stages. We saw some really good hard racing as they go three wide and almost get into a little bit of a mess. Kyle Kammer went on the outside. All the drivers are sticking with each other right thick and through, and it's been pretty clean, pretty respectful so far as we're getting out of turn Turn four and lap 13. Only the one caution, but all of these drivers with how much they're fanning out to the inside line on the apron towards the grass, swinging back up to the wall. You've got to think that there will be a mistake coming as sometime soon because I don't think these drivers are uh, going to be able to make it stick for this long. But nonetheless, Bradley Burke lets the inside position go away to Daniel Eberhardt. And in the number 90 car, that Abruzzi blue car. He's going to go under the lime green car of Bradley Burke in the 95. Not going to clear him, but look who's up into the party. It's Andrew Farinaj, and he will look to take third and push Daniel Eberhardt into a better position to help Farinaj out. Eberhardt is able to take the lead momentarily. Not sure if he's going to clear him. He was thinking about it, but thought better because that fender could have been tagged by Burke, would have ended both of their races. But him swinging back down to the grass, it gives Farinaj another opportunity to get some momentum going and go underneath Burke. Burke has to be forced out to the wall. Eberhardt was a little bit tight, had a bit of understeer there, and it's going to end up helping Andrew Farinaj if he can get into a good position going into three, but he is unable to do so. We're riding on board with him now.
Farinaj getting pushed by Daniel Scott into turn one. These cars are separated by less than two tenths of a second. That's the top four. If we're going back to 11th place, Kyle Trudell has fallen off. He started or restarted, I should say, from second place on the outside line. I think the preferred spot, as we have seen, seems to be that inside position. Agno Phillip, who started in fourth, the second row back on the outside line, is back into now seventh place. But look who is in front. It's Andrew Farinaj. Are we even surprised here? Dylan Jones got the win two weeks ago at Kentucky, the first to stop uh, Farinaj in a pretty long time. But it's now Eberhardt and Farinaj. They're both drivers that have won at this racetrack, and it's getting very intense. Nineteen laps down, and they're racing like it's lap 124. Eberhardt down on the inside of Farinaj. The inside line has been the preferred line. But is he going to be able to clear Farinaj and maybe just in front of him at the end of four? It looks like he did do exactly that, but Farinaj will look to get down to the apron, but so does Eberhardt, so does Daniel Scott. Really, the majority of the top five, that's what they are all doing. And now an accordion almost forming in the back as Eberhardt was going down low. First, Farinaj almost into Daniel Scott's fender, but they all work it out well. We've had some intense racing for 10 laps. It's been pretty remarkable to watch all of these drivers able to handle it around the road of Chicagoland. Eberhardt still holds first, probably the biggest margin that he's held first by in this race since the restart, only by 15 hundredths of a second. Or at least, uh, yes, 15 hundredths, that is. But... Uh, Andrew Farinaj is going to look to make that change as Daniel Scott and Farinaj almost get collected and bit, get put into the wall. Unfortunately for uh, what Scott was trying to do, he wasn't going to be able to get behind Farinaj and get into the draft as it looked like. But nonetheless, some intense blocking already happening. Sam Nieto, he was in the conversation for the win two weeks ago at Kentucky, fell off a bit, but he's right back in this battle after starting in eighth. And if we want to talk about heavy movers, Liam Sheet, he started in the 19th. He's right now in fifth place. All the drivers fanning out across the dog leg front stretch of Chicagoland Speedway. Still side by side. That's Farinaj and Daniel Scott. Oh, it almost looked like Scott got in to the fender of Farinaj, but luckily for both of them, they escaped. Farinaj had a really nice bit of momentum coming out of turn two, but he's not going to be able to get back onto the bumper of Eberhardt. He'll use the draft, though. Going into the dog leg, 23 laps down in this race. Just over 100 to go with it. Liam Sheen getting a little bit of understeer. It kind of blocks the entire path of the drivers behind, and we might see four wide. Bradley Burke was looking at it, but he decided against it. We've still got three wide further back in a fight over fifth place, or even third place, that is, all of these drivers. It's a conglomeration of Chevys, Toyotas, Fords, and it's quite beautiful to see all of these drivers just riding right next to each other. As you see the smoke. Uh, coming out of the tires of Liam Sheen. It looked like he disappeared for quite a second, but Gary Sexton is up in the conversation now. Sexton started 12th place. Now he is in ninth. but because of the hard racing happening from fourth on back, he is able to catch up and try to get into this grid and make out of it with a few more game positions. Goes down to the grass on the inside, makes it three wide. Will he be able to get down on the inside and still stay side by side he's going to have to fall back into line and 
Although these cars, these drivers are really battling right now, what we're seeing at the front of the pack is Daniel Eberhardt, uh, Sam Nieto, and Andrew Farinaj start to pull away by a half a second over Agnel Phillip, who currently holds fourth place. He's actually gotten away from the huge mess of uh, Liam Sheen's fifth place lead over Daniel Scott and Eric Stanford, who's up from 15th place. All these drivers really need to get some good points stored away. When we're talking about drivers who really, and I mean really, need some wins here. Sam Nieto, he's one of them, currently sat uh, well outside of the playoffs. 23rd, uh, or 23rd, a tie for 23rd, that is, in the points standings. But if he wins, remember, he will be in the playoffs, the full Throttle Cup Series playoffs, which starts in a, quite a few weeks. It's going to start September 7th at Darlington Raceway in the Boosted Club 125. That will be something to look out for. But with a driver like Nieto, who was in the conversation just two weeks ago, being in the conversation again, you've got to really think that a win here would make him a potentially a threat once the playoffs do get underway. The Chick-fil-A car of Daniel Scott currently showing in seventh place. He's still going to be scored there. Drivers are, even though it looks chaotic in the rear view of his car and Kyle Trudell as well, it's starting to settle down ever so slightly. But if we do have a caution coming later in the race or even soon, I'm sure we'll see some more of that aggressive driving again. But for the moment, it's really the uh, top four that have run away over a second from Eric Stanford. And if we're talking about a driver like Eric Stanford, he's one of those drivers that could really benefit from uh, some nice points. He is currently the last driver in. He's in by 14 points, uh, 203 back of the points leader. Uh, Sean Callis is the first driver outside the playoffs as we uh, had a replay. Oh, and that is a big incident, but what an absolutely wonderful save by Thomas George. It looked like a surefire yellow that was coming out, but obviously that is not the case, and he keeps it under control, and it's currently going to be uh, put into probably around 15th, 17th place officially, or actually 20th place, as I said, officially as he crosses the line. So does lose around 10 positions from that incident. But the fact that he was able to keep it uh, going, keep the car from going into the grass and kept it on the apron is quite the job. As we see this battle between the 26 car of Daniel Scott, the 24 of Grant Davis. It's really heating up in this mid-pack battle with, remember, 38 cars are participating in this race. Two of them are a lap or two down. Kyle Kammer, or Kammer is the one driver that is a lap down. Andrew Pellegrin is two laps down. Justin Carey, who is involved in the incident earlier in the race, is the last driver on the lead lap. Currently uh, in scored in 36th place, 16 seconds off of the leader, who currently, and for the last few laps, has been Daniel Eberhardt starting to stretch that lead just a little bit. Uh, 15 hundredths in the last lap. It was uh, a 0.5 second margin. Now it's a 0.69 margin. So a little over 15 hundredths. And uh, he's ever so slightly stretching it. Eberhardt is the kind of driver that you really have uh, seen turn it on in some races. Sometimes he's not even anywhere to be seen, but he's the kind of driver that you need to have a good, consistent run to go into the playoffs and get some major points. He's had some uh, nine top ten finishes. All of them, all of them have been top five finishes at, as well, which is uh, quite outstanding to say the least. But as we are watching all of them on lap 35, 91 laps to go, 90 once they cross the line. And if we want to talk about pit strategy, because that will be a topic 
of conversation soon. A Cup Series car can hold around 80 miles of fuel. That's not gallons, that's how many miles they can go on a single fuel tank. So if you do the math, it's a mile and a half. Around lap 53 is when you're start going to start seeing cars going down in the pit lane, maybe a little bit later than that, depending on how much fuel they legitimately have in their tanks and how much they're able to save. And the other thing is some drivers did come into the pits on lap five. Now, why did they do that then? Well, think about it this way. If it goes green for the rest of the race, you know you're going to be burning up the most amount of fuel uh, in those 120, 115 or so remaining laps after the caution. You might be able to make it on a one stopper if you do get fuel at that five, six, seven lap mark. And it's not necessarily a bad idea to maybe just try to throw in a little bit of dice, throw the strategy game in there and look to get a one stopper instead of a potential two stopper or a race run on fuel mileage. That was just a good call by some of the drivers, one of them uh, being Dylan Jones, who uh, currently is positioned in 19th place, uh, right behind Adam Benefiel, who, if you recall, was caught up in that inc incident earlier with Justin Carey, and he right on board with Jones. Some high octane racing here at Chicagoland. Eberhardt still holds the lead, is still starting to stretch it, not starting to, but continue to, continuing to stretch that lead by maybe uh, five hundredths of a second every lap. Currently a 0.75 advantage over Sam Nieto as they cross the line here. It's now over eight tenths of a second. Andrew Farinage is officially uh, one second back of Eberhardt, so that top battle, it's uh, really settled down over the past few laps. Eric Stanford is starting to climb into the conversation of the top four runaway group. He is currently half a second off of uh, Agnol Phillip, who's currently a second and a half off of Eberhardt. Uh, Phillip did a really good job of getting back into the conversation after a, a struggling start for Phillip. Uh, the driver was able to make his way back up into the top five. He fell all the way back into the cusp out of missing out of the top ten. But that climb back to the front, well, it proved to be very fruitful for him. Joseph Theus, Daniel Scott were watching that gap between both drivers come on right now. Thea is currently behind Dan or Daniel Scott, excuse me, currently uh, in front of or behind Joseph Thias. And uh, you see Matthew Mara now has that 15th place spot. He's in the conversation. He's one of those drivers that also needs to get a good points run, uh, but probably just a win if he wants to get any shot of making the playoffs. But uh, definitely something to look out for. Matthew Mara. Uh, we look, take a look at what he has done this season so far. Only four races, but he does have a uh, playoff waiver if he were to win any of the races. He's uh, started uh, an average starting spot before this race of 18th, and his average finish rate is 21st. He's racing with the virtual reality goggles on. I know Evan and I have talked about quite a few weeks ago uh, when we were talking about virtual reality, I believe it was at Pocono, uh, what it does for your racecraft. And uh, it's pretty remarkable. If you've never tried on virtual reality goggles, whether that's the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive, I really urge you to try it because it is quite a magnificent experience uh, to see what it will actually do. You won't feel it, but it'll feel like it in your brain when your eyes are seeing the inside of a stock car around Chicago. And that's obviously what Mar is facing right now as we're looking at Adam Benefiel riding right alongside with Daniel Scott who, remember, had his uh, little issue and he lost uh, quite a bunch of spots uh, 
with along with Thomas George, who remember he was back in 20th after he almost spun out, but he's currently showing in 22nd position, so he hasn't been able to gain any time after riding in the top 10, or at least the battle for the top 10, for uh, quite a while. E Iberhart lost some momentum uh, trying to pass some lapped cars. Sam Nieto is now within half a second, uh, now down to 0.45 seconds of Eberhardt in the lead. 46th lap of the race here. The Boosted Club 125 at Chicago Land Speedway. And look at that backstretch, the curved backstretch onto this one and a half mile track. The Turns are both at 18 degrees. The back stretch, five degrees, and the front stretch, which they are the leaders are currently on right now, 11 degrees. So uh, quite a bit of banking going throughout this track, and we've seen it to be an inside line dominated track. There's really a uh, with tracks like, for example, Kentucky, especially if you're trying to get around turns three and four, which are much flatter than turns one and two. You're gonna want to have some inside position there. Uh, but when you've got a, a specific amount of banking, uh, for example, uh, progressive banking, it will lead to more of an idea uh, or a possibility of gaining some spots running close to the wall. We've seen that at tracks like Homestead Miami Speedway. We've seen that at tracks like uh, Kansas Speedway. And uh, these, these are the tracks that it, it's so incredibly fun to watch the cars run so close to the wall. Uh, for the entirety of the turn to see how they do. And speaking about how drivers are doing, Dylan Jones, who pitted uh, and went into uh, pretty much last place uh, after his pit stop earlier, uh, is currently in 17th place. Now, he clinched his spot in the playoffs with a win last week, or two weeks ago, that is, and nothing much to worry about except possibly uh, gaining some more wins and... Uh, that's not what he's doing right now, but that strategy call, just remember, it might come out to uh, help him down the line. Eberhardt making his way past some more traffic of Andrew Pellegrin, but he slows him down quite a bit. Sam Nieto is going to love that as he's going to hope that Pellegrin doesn't slow him down either, but it looks like he might as he has to take the foot off the gas and not get all the way to the wall where we will see what this gap is going to look like between Nieto and Eberhardt in the number side of the standings once they cross the line, but I feel like uh, it uh, not only did it help Eber or Nieto in the turn one and two, but it ended up hurting Nieto coming out of turn two. That gap only went down two hundredths, so not even enough to say that it was even a blemish on the mark. But it's pretty clearly right now the Sam Nieto and Daniel Eberhardt show. Both drivers are staying within a half second of each other. Andrew Farinaj, he is currently sat in P3, the last place on the podium. He is just over a second off, and Agnel Phillip has fallen to a second behind with Eric Stanford closing in on Phillip. Only 300 separates two drivers, as we do see once again Andrew Pellegrini starting to uh, become a factor for the lead pack when it comes to passing these lap cars. So we have the caution that laps end around lap 11, I believe. We will be seeing if the calculations are correct. In around 10 to 15 laps, we will possibly be seeing the first pit stops of the day as we see, again, some close battling happening for the top 10 with Austin Wagner at the very end of the top 10, Michael Loria right behind him, and Kyle Trudell, Joseph Fias, and Dylan Jones up to 14th place. This is where the action seems to be right now as Wagner right in line with Rhett McBride is going to stay in line, not make a move, is going to just back off a little bit, try to get a run down the front stretch on the apron. You see all these cars fanning down to the inside. You almost think if you do not have some draft help on the uh, inside and going to the apron, then it's, uh, or if you're not, if you don't have draft help and you're on the outside, it's almost like 
why would you even bother going to the outside when the inside line is the quicker way around? But we see a little bit in front. Bradley Burke slowing G Gary Sexton down quite a bit. And the 47 car of uh, Andrew Pellegrin again getting involved in the action. He's just got to get to the outside and get away from these drivers because it seems to have hurt again another bunch of drivers in the hunt for position is Gary Sexton is the leader of this bunch of cars or Bradley Burke that is he's trying to follow Burke who has been holding pretty steady and Sexton is right there with a huge jump of speed goes down the inside into three will he get the move Donnie sliding a bit of a slide job but I think it's going to cost him some time the momentum is back into Bradley Burke's favor but the shorter line around the speedway is what Gary Sexton takes it's going to cost him a tiny bit of speed but he has the inside line will he have the position out of three or two that is Sexton gets the lead out of turn four in this battle for seventh place. And he's going to uh, start his trek for Eric Stanford. But that is unless Rhett McBride has anything to say about that. Daniel Eberhardt still just a half second ahead of Sam Nieto. Andrew Farinas has dropped to a second and a half behind Daniel Eberhardt, the leader. So he is probably embroiled in some traffic. And now you're starting to see some drivers head into the pits. Uh, Michael Kaczynski is one of those drivers. He said he was pitting just a lap ago. And this is Devin Winfield, the 32 car or 32nd that is in the lineup in the 45 car is heading into the pitch right now currently scored a lap down he started the race in 37th position so maybe this is just a little bit of strategy as well but like I said within the next five to ten laps we're going to start to see cars come down into the pits and I think everyone's a little bit nervy if there is no caution before the end of this race we might see cars needing to get a splash of fuel and go for two pit stops in the race uh that's again why i'm saying that the strategy call of going into the pits earlier in the run right at the first yellow of the race on lap three might have been a smart call because it might have been the extra bit of fuel that some of these drivers needed to make it to the end on only one stop as we see sam nieto he is the first one to bite from that lead pack and we'll see where this will put him when it comes down to the undercut. Now, will Daniel Eberhardt follow him on the next lap? We'll have to see. But he has no help, no drafting help behind or in front to uh, deal with. But he's got clean air. Will that make a difference here at Chicagoland? Or will he come into the pits? He's staying out for now. So we'll see exactly uh, what that means. And you see uh, right in front of uh, Sam Nieto is uh our good mountain dew friend <laughs> it's, a, it's such a fantastic uh scheme right there dylan jones has made his way up to 11th place that's the driver to look out for if we're talking about the strategy call earlier he might be in the run for the win but we will have to see as Andrew Farina, it's lonely to be him and Eberhardt. No cars within really any seconds of them. Agnel Phillip currently holding the third place spot. Oh, and a spin in the pits. That's Scott McClendon. I don't know. Will this bring out a caution? He's currently backing up. We'll watch the replay. Yeah, it just comes in way too hot. Tries to slam the brakes. And uh, it, he was worried about getting a speeding penalty in pit lane, but now he's going to have to worry about that time that might have been lost by not only the repair of that car, but if there's any possible penalties in addition to the spin. Daniel Eberhardt is in pit lane. He's stopping at the number two pit box. We'll see where he's going. Rhett McBride pitting in. Gary Sexton pitting in. So everyone is coming down at the end of lap 62, the start 
of lap 63. We will see where that affects all of the drivers here. Daniel Eberhardt, he gets his four tires on the stop 14 and a half seconds. He's back out onto the track. But the question is, where is Sam Nieto going to come out? Nieto, I think he's going to pipe him here. Nieto will get around Eberhardt pretty handedly, and it's Nieto's lead. What a fantastic call for Sam Nieto. The undercut, it worked to perfection. Now, is there any chance that another driver even pulled a better strategy off? I don't think so. That gap, it's almost two seconds between Eberhardt and Sam Nieto. That's a two and a half second swing there. You'll see more of the lead pack lead drivers going into the pits. The 94 of Agnel Phillip, the 88 of Andrew Farinage. Those are the two drivers that could have also pulled off a great call by staying out. It's all about the track position and who was around you, but I think Sam Nieto, as he rounds turn four, is going to have the place. Andrew Farinage, his pit stop is over at 15.7 seconds and he's being held. Oh, I wonder if there was a bit of a speeding penalty. We'll have to watch out, but Sam Nieto very easily will have the lead of this race is Farina still being held? Oh no, this is not good for Andrew Farina, but it might mean we're gonna have a race without Farina being in the conversation of the winner. Getting tires placed on now, it looks like, or the jack just fell. This is a disaster. Trying to see exactly what happened to Farina. He's going to be scored at least a lap down by the time this ends. Rewinding all the way that I can. He actually, and I'll tell you exactly what happened. I'd love to get a replay here. He went way too hot coming out of turn four, trying to get down into the pits. But you know what happened? He almost spun. He went through the grass to go into pit lane. It was an unsafe entry, and that cost him massively. Farina is currently shown as two laps down. That's unbelievable. We'll get the replay up right now. So Farina coming out of turn two. Usually at a mile and a half track, you're gonna want to go a lot slower heading into the apex at turn three and turn four. And it looks like he's still going full throttle right here tries to slow it down but i mean that is way too hot entering or at least trying to enter pit road goes through the grass enters it unsafe almost uh hit the 94 car of agnel phillip and it's pretty unbelievable you really don't see andrew freenage doing anything any mistake like that especially when he had the chance to uh, get into a first place position if there were any other issues with drivers like Sam Vieto. But nonetheless, that's uh, what ends up happening. Dylan Jones, the last of the potential victors in this race to head into the pits. And I just want everyone to remember, 63 laps is uh, when drivers, uh, pretty much Sam Nieto at the end of lap 62 went into the pits. That was uh, after a lengthy yellow flag. Uh, so in terms of green flag laps that they could run potentially on a full tank of fuel, we are looking at another 57, 58 or so laps. Well, this is lap 70 for all of these drivers. Sam Nieto on lap 70 as the leader officially scored there right now. And if you have 55 laps to go in this race as he crosses the line to start lap number 71, well, that's going to be cutting it a tiny bit close on fuel. A yellow makes it easy. A yellow makes it so they are good to go on one tank, one pit stop, I should say, in the race. Dylan Jones currently in 14th place, 21 seconds off of Nieto. Daniel Eberhardt, six seconds off the pace. It's remarkable.
So Sam Nieto with that big lead will look back at Grant Davis and Eric Stanford, or actually that's Kyle Trudell, but battling it out very wide down the dogleg front stretch. And it's going to be Kyle Trudell who has the spot. Davis, he lets off a lot of speed. And Gary Sexton, who had a fantastic entry into one, is going to have the speed out of two. Bradley currently scored in fourth place as we watch this fantastic battle raging on right here. This is the time we want to look at the playoff standings and see who could potentially get a big boost from this race. Bradley Burke, he is uh, sitting pretty comfortably right now. The second driver in, currently 15th in the playoff standings. He is actually in by 32 points with a race like this currently shown in fifth place. That would be a fantastic result for him as well as the guy who's right below him in 16th on the cut line, Eric Stanford. Stanford is only 14 points in, and Stanford currently shown in fourth place. We have those standings not live, but the standings coming into the race. Brian Chambliss is a, another driver who, after this race, uh, might not have too, too much to worry about. He's currently running 12th, so a good job by the drivers on the cut line. Thomas George had that issue, so he might have to worry a little bit going forward, but we have those drivers, Sean Callis, Steve Durham, and uh, the two others down there in that order, uh, uh, Kyle Kammer, or Kammer that is, and Gary Sexton. Uh, those are the drivers that are within 11 points of each other and uh, going from 14 to 25 points out of the playoff picture. How are they doing in this race so far? Well, we can just take a uh, quick look and see drivers like Sean Callis currently a lap down in 29th place. Does nothing for him who really needs the points right now. Steve Durham, he's currently shown in 25th place. Again, it does nothing for him. Kyle Kammer, he had that crash earlier in the race, 36th position. The only driver who is doing really well currently outside of the bubble right now is Gary Sexton. Gary Sexton in fifth place. So a pretty remarkable job by all of the drivers fighting for their playoff lives in the cut line. It's going to make it even more important to get a win in the final three races of the season after this one. A reminder, in two weeks, we go to Michigan International Speedway for 80 laps, 160 miles at the two-mile D-shaped oval. And that, the wild cards are thrown into the air. 40 laps of the Daytona International Speedway road course. 40 laps, 142.4 miles we take one week off and then round 20 august 31st that is the final regular season race the 20th race of the season it is at the super speedway daytona international 80 laps there 200 miles really cannot wait to see what happens with those wild card weekends i know i'm just chomping at the bits getting ready for that We watch this battle with Dan Cruz and Rhett McBride. Battle for 17th within two seconds of each other right now. Cruz has the uh, disadvantage, but maybe some momentum coming out of two. It's, uh, I'm amazed at how well these drivers were able to uh, fight at the beginning of the restart, way back on the lap 11. 70 or so laps ago and uh, now all of them are spaced out after these uh, breaks I guess you could say the pit stops and there's a lot of breaks in the field in fact the first driver a lap down is Tom Moreno or Morano I should say in 27th place Steve Durham is the first driver to uh, be on the lead lap and uh, Dylan Jones currently shown in 25th place 
I wonder if something happened to him <laughs> because Jones was in the running earlier. He's currently 25 seconds off the leader. And I really do wonder if he got into the wall at some point because he lost a lot of time and a lot of speed. It looks like he actually got a penalty in the pits. That pit stop for him was 30 seconds long. So that strategy, it's almost been thrown out the window, out the cockpit for that penalty. It's things like that that you really cannot afford anything of. Even though Jones is in the playoffs, trying to get some more wins and getting him uh, some more points once you're finally in the playoffs is going to be so important. We see he was on pit lane for 54 seconds. So that pit lane delta is around 24 seconds, uh, not including that pit stop. Something to note is that delta once we start to see the uh, cars. If we go green flag for the rest of the round, once we see all of these drivers try to go for the win, uh, and possibly, possibly make it on fuel, then uh, it, it, that delta will become so important because they're really going to be stopping goes. You think about it that way. Just a little bit of fuel added to the tank at each time, and that's what would uh, happen. McBride up in the 15th place. John Fowler was the driver in 15th, but he lost a lot of momentum, has fallen back to uh, currently in 18th position. So not so great from him in the previous lap, uh, trying to see exactly what happened to him. He had the position going into uh, this lap, or the previous lap that is, and then uh, not quite sure what happened. He kind of disappears off of our radar. Looks like he got up high and into the wall, but still racing with that beautiful paint scheme right there. It looks like Frankenstein and uh, Dracula. That's uh, <laughs> that's quite remarkable. Love to get a look on that. And it, some of the paint schemes in this series are just fantastic, whether they're vintage inspired or just uh, wacky like that. Yes, we've got a great camera shot. Hugo, our producer, in the production booth, we thank you for your service with that shot. <laughs> Currently following the 33 car of John Rodden, start 25th place. Some of the bigger movers is uh, Eric Stanford, who has inherited that third place position um, off of San... Wait, hold on. We have a little bit of a problem here. Daniel Eberhardt fell by a lot of seconds over the last lap or so. He was in second place, four seconds off. All of a sudden, he loses three places. And we're going back on the replay, and I can tell you exactly what happened. He, uh, it looked like he had to put down so much, uh, lose so much speed because of a car almost uh, parrying right into him on the previous lap. I'll have to get some uh, more confirmation on that, but Devin Winfield, Looked like he got into the wall, slowed down any progress that Eber had, or Eberhardt had, and obviously that happened. Not a good mark for him at all. So Eberhardt, who was the driver in front before they got to pit stops. He looked like he was going to uh, not dominate, but be the driver to beat in the field today. Not only was there a long pit stop a delta for him, which ended up with Sam Nieto getting a pretty massive lead out of the pits. Now Eberhardt has lost a lot more time than he, than he just gained. Because when he uh, came back out onto the track with uh, Nieto passing him, it was a seven second difference. He got it down to around four seconds before losing a further th two to three seconds. And, we currently see Gary Sexton, who is right behind Eberhard, and they have some uh, company in the form of Tom Morano, who will get all the way to the outside. Very uh, kind driving from the driver, currently a lap down. Sexton, who really could use some points here, is going to uh, look at moving further into the top five on Eberhard. Right now, the top five, Sam Nieto, Agno Phillip, Eric Stanford, who's just three-tenths of a second off of Phillip, and Daniel Eberhard followed by Gary Sexton.
a driver like Sexton is one that really, truly could use a win because he's uh, a little too far out to comfortably say he has a shot with points, especially with how drivers like Eric Stanford, Bradley Burke, they're all driving in this race tonight. But if Sexton gets lucky, six seconds off Nieto, the leader, if Sexton plays the fuel game right, he could find himself with a spot in the playoffs, and wouldn't that be beautiful? And I will say, finally, there's no reason to be disliking this video anymore by hearing just my sole voice. We're welcoming to the broadcast, Arjuna Genki Body. Arjuna, thank you for letting me breathe a little bit here. It sounds like you've had an interesting few uh, <laughs> laps here. and glad Just to a be few. Back. Yeah, glad to be back in the real sim racing booth. And, you know, we're approaching the end of the playoffs here, and it's been a while since I was in the booth. But, you know, we're getting to the point, like you say, with drivers like Gary Sexton, they need a win. And, you know, even if they don't get it here, you know, that last race of the play, uh, the regular season, Dylan, is at Daytona. So, you know, you're getting to the point here where if you can't get the win, you're going to start getting a little bit more desperate. And where else can you get more desperate than the uh, Cathedral of Speed Daytona? Yeah, that's going to be a really fun race to look out for. And I will say that right here, though, Arjuna, with Gary Sexton being one of those drivers that kind of has to be desperate right now, uh, maybe not desperate to the fact of Daytona, you know, the Cathedral of Speed desperate, but desperate enough where he will take chances if chances are there to be taken. He's currently running in fifth place. Uh, and just to catch everybody up a little bit, Sam Nieto has uh, gotten the lead after the pit stop, and he's going back back into the pitch right now. So I think he could not make it on fuel alone. That's what the idea was. He's going to stop where his tires could be optimally switched. He had a big enough buffer to uh, maybe, just maybe afford to get uh, at least two right side tires. This is a bit of a strategy play right here, Arjuna. Yeah, and let's see how it plays out because obviously he's going very different to the rest of his competitors. We'll see the, uh, the time right there on the graphic. So about just over 10 seconds. That's a long stop and he's going for four tires, Dylan. Four tires and you see right behind, you actually can't see it, but Austin Wagner had an issue heading into the pits as well and getting out of the pits. He actually missed his pit box right after sliding in through the grass. So uh, not the best way of getting into pit road not sure exactly what happened there but nonetheless this is a supreme strategy call and arjuna is that him making some brass snowmen but it looks like he made a mistake maybe he didn't even plan to come down to pit road or he made that mistake early on the entry but he decides to take the full toe so you know he tried to come down to pit lane and he's put himself in a very precarious situation we'll get the replay here in fact Oh, oh, wow. So he got really collected in an incident right there, and you have to feel for it. Oh, definitely. I mean, he was caught out there by another car that was trying to come into the pit lane from high, and he will get another replay here. You can see the 26 car, just a little bit of contact, and into the grass he goes, and he'll be very glad that the new damage model isn't still in effect on this car <laughs> because I think his car would not be in the same condition it is right now. Yeah, perhaps that would not be the case. But now we have a battle for the lead once again. And after that decision by Sam Nieto to go into the pits, Nieto is currently the uh, first driver a lap down. Now, could you imagine if a yellow comes out? It would absolutely screw up Nieto's chances of getting a win here and locking himself into the playoff, but he has so much more speed than the rest of the drivers. He's going to try and get his lap back. He is right with this elite pack crew. This could be really interesting, Arjuna. Yeah, and we'll see the effect of the fresh tires. You can see him going down to the inside of the My amount word. of speed that he's carrying. It just looks like he's in a different class of car right now, Dylan. It's amazing. He's got a lot of work <laughs> to do. We're coming up to 25 laps to go, and there's still a long way. And being on that slightly different fuel strategy, you can never give up, and he's got to just keep focusing now. 
Yeah, that's what I was uh, talking about for the majority of this race, actually, was the, uh, the fuel window and the strategy the strategy that a lot of these guys will have to worry about. There's 26 laps left, and with the fuel window being at around 50 to 55, maybe a tiny bit more uh, at the end of this race, some drivers are not going to be able to make it. Now, you have a situation Dylan Jones was one of the drivers who pitted on uh, lap five or lap four after a, uh, a, a crash took out uh, two drivers from the back of the pack. They're still in the race, but uh, he went into the pits. And I think the, the thinking there was uh, if I get my fuel tank loaded up right here and it goes green for the rest of the race, I could have a shot at the win on a one-stop strategy. Unfortunately for Jones, he... Uh, had a penalty in the pits, a 30-second uh, stop. So that took him out of the running uh, for the win. Andrew Farinage, he is currently way back in 26th place, uh, the second driver a lap down after he had a mighty penalty applied to him. He was in the contention for the win, as he uh, quite typically always is. But this is a big race for a driver like Sam Nieto, who could have potentially made a race winning calls with the strategy there to get four tires you saw that speed that he had and just to let you know nieto is already out of turn four while eberhart just went in to turns four three and then four and is now on the front straight so you see how much speed has been gained there a driver like eric stanford could certify himself as a playoff driver. Gary Sexton as well. Bradley Burke could even do that too. So a lot of drivers, Arjuna, have the potential of making this playoff uh, fight even crazier than it already is. Yeah, we're coming to 20 laps to, to go, and let's focus on Sam Nieto, the gap to the leader. Well, it's about 25 seconds right now, and Still in the last few laps, he's about 1.5 seconds faster than the rest of the field, including your leader. So we're going to see what happens here. Obviously, as his tires start to wear, that pace delta is just going to go that much closer. But it's going to be close. And if you're Sam Nieto, like you say, he's tried this different strategy. He's got a chance, I think, for sure. So something I took mark of when all the drivers, Arjuna, went into the pits earlier in this run was the, the delta in the pits is around 24, 25 seconds. So with that 25 second gain right there, I mean, you've pretty much got to say, is if this stays green, Sam Nieto has this race in the bag and has locked himself into the playoffs with that strategy call. Don't say stuff like that, Dylan. I'm you don't want to put the if. commentator's curse. If. Yeah, you don't want to put the commentator's curse on him, but I love this type of alternate strategy, and Chicagoland is a very interesting 1.5 miler, and you know, it's not necessarily the same as some of the other ones, and I've come here not in the NASCAR, but in the IndyCar before, and it's a very interesting track. We see them coming down onto the apron right now, and we're officially in the 20-lap-to-go window. Let's see what happens. Yeah, this is going to be uh, quite interesting, but I, I, I know the broadcaster's curse is a thing. I've always uh, put the voodoo on all the drivers that we've done races with, Arjuna. That's why I said a big, mighty if. If it goes green flag all the way, Nieto is sitting in the driver's seat. I think, I think Eberhardt and Philip Stanford, all of them have to have in the back of their mind what could potentially happen. Because Eberhardt, just so you are aware, Eberhardt was one of the last drivers to pit. He pit at the end of lap 62, while Sam Nieto pit just three or four laps before. So he was able to get some momentum and some speed going uh, very early on in that run. But obviously, he is going to not even have a shot. That's why he went to the pits to try and maximize the amount of grip he can have with those tires. Uh, but I, I, I just, I don't think Eberhardt can make it all the way. It's really going to be close. I think he'll try and stay out for as long as possible because he's going to be looking for a caution to help out here. I think, actually, he just made his way to the back of this leading trio. So I think these leading ah, cars doing a little saving. bit. Yep, exactly. Doing a little bit of swapping, doing a little bit of fuel saving. And like Evan Pasoko has told us in our production chat, a few of these cars out front are a bit worried 
that they're one or two laps short on fuel. So I'm a little bit worried about these leading cars and we'll see what happens. The pace is holding fairly consistent here though, Dylan. So Sam Nieto, that Delta is definitely just trailing off a little bit the last time around. He was only half a second quicker. So those tires are really starting to wear up and that advantage he has, well, starting to slip away. Well, it's a 17 second difference now. And I mean, there are so many storylines you can take out of this race and the stage that we're currently at Arjuna. Eric Stanford, he gets a win, he's in the buffs and he could certainly use that to uh, negate any stress that he might feel in the last few weeks of this season. Agno Phillip, uh, this is one of Phillip's uh, only few races of the season. So not sure if he has a playoff waiver, I don't know. Uh, Stanford will obviously make the playoffs with a win. Daniel Eberhardt already in the playoffs. He started the race in second, currently in third, trying to save fuel. Gary Sexton, he is currently sat in fourth place under a second from the lead pack. He, more than anyone really at the top four, could use a win because that, that would certify his in the playoffs. But Michael Lariah goes down the inside of Sexton and takes away fourth place for the moment. Lariah is on the move. Yeah, and just remember, Eric Stanford and Gary Sexton are both drivers, Dylan, that are on the bubble in terms of the playoff contention. So, you know, they've got to be really thinking about each position is a point-paying position. And there's just a little bit more stress as we come towards the end of the regular season as we see a car looking down onto the apron. Sam Nieto, 20 seconds off the leaders. If it stays green, if they need to pit, and he has no issues, he will win this race. That is a guarantee I will put right there. But you see what all the, the uh, ifs I put right there, Arjuna. So I don't think that that is a curse, right? Is that in the rule book? Well, we'll see. It'll, we'll see how it plays <laughs> out. And if Sam doesn't get the win, I know he'll be the first to come and blame you. But at the end of the day, we'll see. I think these three cars, we keep seeing them switching around here. That fuel, we don't know, Dylan, until those last few laps. It's all just a matter here of sitting and waiting up in the booth. It really is just a matter of sitting, waiting. And we'll try to see exactly what happened. But I'm looking back at the race times for everyone. Eric Stanford, for example, his uh, pit stop came, and I'm trying to see exactly where it came, on lap 65. So Stanford, he might have played the game perfectly, and if he has enough fuel, I'm not sure if he will, because that's asking a lot there. What, 60 or so laps? That's a, it could potentially happen. I'm not exactly sure, but Stanford's sitting in a nice position. as Agnel Phillip as well. We'll see those lap times. Arjuna, this could be uh, quite intriguing. Agnel Phillip also stopped on lap 64, so, uh, huh, this, <laughs> this is gonna be a little closer than we thought. Yeah, we're coming to 10 to go as well, so we're really getting close. And, you know, that fuel window, I've just come in as well very late onto this broadcast, Dylan, but it's really just put poised in this uh, point in time to really just culminate a very exciting pitch strategy finish. And it's something, Dylan, that, you know, we've been a part on on some of the endurance broadcasts on RaceBot TV. And, you know, I love a good strategy race, and it's just playing out here. And we're not seeing them fight on track. They're just realizing they got to get this done through the strategy. So I'm taking a look at when the pits were made by all of the drivers involved. The driver best off at Bradley Burke is going into pit lane. So he not going to make it on fuel. He pitted on the lap 60. Michael Lariah pit on lap 66. He is in the best possible position. Eric Stanford and I know Philip pit on 65 for heart. Well, he's probably the worst off of all these drivers who have been at the top for the entirety of the race. He pit on lap 63. So if Stanford and Phillip and Lariah can't make it, Eberhardt has no way of making it. This is a fuel strategy race for the ages here in the Full Throttle Cup Series. And we saw Bradley Burke come down onto pit lane. Well, he pitted on lap 60, Dylan, so it's very close. And if any of these guys at the front have a chance of making it, well, they will have saved a lot of fuel and I will be very, very impressed. So I think you said that uh, Sam Nieto was in a very strong position. Well, I think you were right. It's proving to be that way. It's just about how far these drivers can make it. At the line, there are eight laps to go with a mile and a half circuit 
That is 12 miles. Do they have 12 miles left in the tank? And NASCAR Cup Series car can go around 80 miles on a full tank. That is an approximate, no way the exact answer, but that is around where these drivers can go. The question is, will they all make it last? And will it stay green for the rest of this race? Because obviously that would throw in all the plans. I hope it stays green. I love a fuel mileage race. As we see into the pits, the 24 uh, car of Grant Davis comes out of the pits, so he wasn't going to be able to make it. And just so you know, that was, uh, he pit on lap 57, the end of 57, and uh, his pit box was uh, on, well, placed past the start finish line. So the time was mostly gained on lap 58, but he went 57 laps on one tank of with a yellow flag thrown in there as well. I mean, I don't, I don't know how any of these drivers are going to be able to make it unless they really, they really got it right here through the draft. Yeah, and Carl Trudell, well, he pitted on lap number 63. He's down onto pit lane as well. So one of the drivers in the playoffs, well, he wasn't able to make the fuel situation work. And coming to five to go, Dillard, I really have no idea <laughs> which one of these five cars out front has any hope of making it. Well, the question is, if you're Eric Stanford, and by the way, five laps to go, they all still have not come into the pits. If you're Eric Stanford and you can still get a good points day, do you just take the points and let it run with that? Or do you try to go for the win as he tries to make it three wide past some traffic? He's trying to go for the win here. Eberhardt as well, he's worse off. Michael Lariah could possibly win it, but all of this racing, it could be for naught. I wonder if they can make it till the end, Arjuna. Just remember, Eric Stanford is the bubble driver in the playoffs, so he needs some good points. And I think if you're in his position, Dylan, you can't just go for the win. You have to remember that good points are just as important as getting the win. You need those playoff points later in the season as well. So, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how he approaches this one as we come towards the end. Well, Gary Sexton is in fifth place, and he also needs a win. I mean, the drivers this affects the most is Gary Sexton and Eric Stanford. If I'm either of them, the, the thought process has to be crazy right now because you've got the possibility as another lap goes by, three to go once they cross the line. I mean, the possibility of making the playoffs, it's right there if they can keep it. Uh, keep their throttle in it and save enough fuel. Sam Nieto, just for your information, is 17 and a half back in 11th place. The time is running out to see if that strategy will end up paying off. But with three to go, two and a half pushes from Eric Star Daniel Eberhardt to Eric Stanford. It's still Agnel Phillip in the lead. This is going to come down to who has the fuel to make it to the end. I think we're going to start to see some drivers run out at the very last moment. Two laps to go, Arjuna. Well, if they've got the fuel, Dylan, are they going to stop fighting? They've been very respectful and friendly, but Who's going to try and make the move here? If you're Gary Sexton at the back of this train, you know you're not in the playoff bubble right now. What are you going to do back there? How aggressive are you going to be? As Daniel Eberhardt down into the inside, he's going to pit. He's going to pit. He's not going to have the fuel to make it. Will any of the four have the fuel to make it? Agnel Phillip currently in the lead. This is Phillip's second race of his career in the Full Throttle Cup Series. Could he be a winner? White flag is out. One no. to go. Oh, he gets a little loose. He gets a tap from Eric Stanford. He wants the win. Michael Lariah all the way up to the wall. Will he make it three wide? He's pushed up to the wall. Will he get the move done? What a gutsy move there. Sexton is hoping these drivers run out at the very last moment. It looks like Stanford is Phillips in the out. lead. Phillips out. Phillips is out. Eric Stanford, welcome to the playoffs. What a what? finish that was, oh. Dylan. Oh, my God. That was unbelievable and unfortunate for Agnel Phillip there. He wouldn't have got the win even without the touch there, unfortunately. But Eric Stanford, he secures his place in the playoffs. Fantastic race. And, oh, Dylan, I only got to see the last 30 laps or so. But if the rest of the race was like that, oh, you really had a fun <laughs> race there. That was uh, definitely, the, definitely the ending was uh, the best part of it. And by the way, I think Stanford's out of fuel as we speak. He's going very slowly around the apron. So he played that just right. What a interesting strategy call, though, from Sam Nieto. It almost worked out. And Dylan Jones, 
If he did not get the penalty, he could have won that race. He finished 15 seconds off in eighth place. So we love fuel mileage races. Eric Stanford, he literally has no fuel, and he's getting a little bit of a push. Oh, what a what a what a kind mate he has there. <laughs> Stanford got a little bit of a push and a little bit of fun there. The 98, and it looks like the 10 are all going to uh, celebrate alongside him. That's Steve Durham in the 10 car and David Washington in the 98. What a finish to this race. And Eric Stanford, that win puts him in to the playoffs. No more worrying about being right on that cut, li or cut line. Stanford is in. Yeah, and he's going to go to Michigan, the Daytona Road, and then Oval Course just with that pressure off his shoulders, Dylan. And he's going to start just thinking ahead to the rest of the season. And, you know, I think he's going to be very excited. It was a good finish there, and hopefully we'll get to talk to him in just a few moments' time. I'd love to talk to him. He uh, last year had one win. This is his first of the season. Uh, quite exciting. We look at the race results here. Stanford by two tenths of a second over Michael Lariah. Gary Sexton, a good race result for him, finishes just a further tenth of a second behind Lariah. Agnel Phillip does get a fourth place finish, but David Washington in fifth. Joseph Theus gets sixth, Adam Benefield seventh. Dylan Jones, strategy call for him, finishes eighth after a costly penalty. Brett McBride, a ninth place finish, and Sam Nieto, he's wondering what could have been if he didn't make that strategy call, Arjuna. Yeah, well, you know, it was worth the try, and unfortunately, the tires just burned off that little bit too quickly, and we saw how close it was for Eric Stanford. No fuel to do the burnouts, but, you know, at the end of the day, he's got the race win, and that's all that really matters. That is all that matters. Dan Cruz, Shane Parrish, Steve Durham, Steve Soa, Daniel Scott, your top 15, Matthew Mara, the final driver on the lead lap. Daniel Eberhardt, remember, he ran out of fuel in the penultimate lap. He finishes first driver a lap down. Brian Chambliss, Andrew Farina. This is a weird, <laughs> this is a weird result tab that we're reading right now, just so everyone is aware with Eberhardt and Farinaj being a lap down. Bradley Burke, who had a great race, had to pit a little early, finishes in 20th. And Grant Davis in 21st. Thomas George, after a an incident earlier in the race, will be in 22nd position. Cole Frolic in 23rd. Kyle Trudell, unfortunate for him, started 6th, lost 18 positions en route to the 24th place finish. John Fowler in 25th, John Rodden in 26th, and Michael Moser, Scott McClendon, Tom Moreno, and Sean Callis. What a poor showing from Callis. It's not going to do anything well for his playoff hunt. Devin Winfield in 31st, Trevin Valderrama 32nd, uh, Michael Kaczynski 5 laps down, 33rd, Andrew Pellegrini is in at 34th, Kyle Calmer, uh, poor showing for him to 35th, Austin Wagner, Justin Carey, and Liam Sheen. And uh, pretty much Evan Pasako for talking about his technical issues in the broadcast today. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, what a fantastic race that we had. Uh, and we can't wait to talk to all of the drivers from the top three. But for the time being, we're going to send you into a quick commercial break. We'll be right back for some more Full Throttle Cup Series discussion. When you start your career on iRacing, you'll find yourself with four rookie licenses, one for each discipline of racing featured on iRacing. Each of these licenses are independent of one another and are affected each time you compete in an event on this discipline. iRacing's rank series are separated by license level, with more entry-level cars requiring a lower license and higher class cars requiring a higher license. You can visit the current series tab under the Go Racing header in order to see all of our active series during any given season and learn which cars and tracks are being used at which license levels. If you're just looking to enjoy top tier cars from championships like the NASCAR Cup Series, NTT Data IndyCar Series, or World of Outlaws, you're able to do that right away as an iRacing rookie with series like the Carburetor Cup, Delara Dash, Pickup Cup, or Sling Mud for Fun. These series are unranked and competing in them will not affect your safety rating, minimum participation requirements, or I rating. 
To find other unranked series, filter the page you are on for the unranked tag and any unranked series will be sorted onto your screen. Likewise, to filter these series out, select the ranked tag and any unranked series will be hidden from your view. Of note, user-created races like leagues and hosted sessions are also unranked and do not affect your safety rating or minimum participation requirements. If you want to achieve your minimum participation requirement without running races, you can run solo time trials to demonstrate your capabilities behind the wheel. These events go off every few minutes and will allow you to achieve your MPR without having to wait for scheduled races. To access time trials on iRacing, select the series you wish to race and click on the blue button on the bottom right to select Time Trial. From there, wait for the session to launch. In order to complete a time trial, you must complete a consecutive number of laps without receiving any incident points. Each discipline and track could be different, so take note of how many laps you need to run in your session. While completing enough time trials will complete your MPR obligation, the safety rating gains you achieve from time trials are extremely minor, so be prepared to do some races in order to increase your SR to meet your promotion requirements. Well, we had a moment to catch our breath. The Full Throttle Real Sim Racing Cup Series presented by Boosted Club was uh, fantastic today. It was uh, really unbelievable in Arjuna. I'm glad you got to see the last 25 laps or so of that race. Helped me take a few more breaths because I certainly needed it as the laps wound down. And uh, we had a first time winner, at least this season, in Eric Stanford. And all of a sudden, he's pushed himself up to sixth place in the playoff standings. We're joined alongside Eric right now. First of all, Eric, congratulations. What are your feelings after a win like that? I'm excited. Happy to finally get a win. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, pretty much a, a, the last second kind of race win for you uh, right there. You're currently in sixth place. Not 16th place anymore in the playoff standing. So the next three races for you, I'm assuming it's going to be a, a lot lighter in the stress levels. Oh, yeah, definitely. That uh, road car is coming up. It's not one of my strong suits, so I'm really happy we got the win tonight to get that one out of the way. We don't have to worry about it. Fantastic. Well, without something to worry about, and actually you're up to fifth place because Malik Ray is not going to be able to make the mouse after missing out on this race and not able to get that with the playoff waiver. Uh, with this win, just tell us what was going through your mind as the lap started to uh, fall down to zero to go and you're looking at that fuel gauge. I mean, what's going through your mind? Did you know you can make it? No, I, I figured we, we were close. We were like maybe a half a lap to the good the entire time. I was trying to lift early in the corners just to save. And I knew um, Phillips, he pitted right around the same time I did, so I knew he was going to be close too. But then I saw Gary and uh, Lariah coming up behind us, and I thought I knew for sure they had enough gas. So just trying to save where I could. And... Was uh, Did you see – what were you thinking when Sam Nieto went into the thoroughly? Did you – feel like oh no this is uh this is what the race is going to come down to fuel mileage i mean yeah after the restart on lap 11 or so <laughs> i'm sure you weren't thinking that it was going to go uh, caution free for the remainder of the race oh no i thought for sure we were going to get a caution in there somewhere and i knew he pit early so i knew he wasn't going to make it so i just had to everybody there at the end was just trying to save what they could to finish where they could so now what's the strategy for you as the season, the regular season that is winds down? Are you going to play it a little safer or are you going to just keep an all out every race? Yep, all out. Try to get as many wins as I can. Awesome. Well, we love to hear that. Uh, all the watchers definitely love to hear that. We really appreciate you coming in, Eric. And again, congratulations.
Thanks. Of course. Well, you know, that was uh, definitely a race to be remembered. Now, uh, you're, I know you're going to be uh, talking um, to not Gary Sexton yet, but Michael Lariah. But I do want to add, Gary Sexton is currently tied for the final playoff place with Steve Durham after that showing. However, Sexton is currently on the uh, on the outside looking in if the playoffs are to start today. Durham has uh, 314 points, as does Sexton, but due to tiebreakers and whatnot, Durham would be the last driver into the playoffs. And it looks like the battle will come down to uh, really Sexton and Durham as the uh, championship uh, starts to come to a playoff point, I guess you could say. Yeah, and a few races to go. So three races in the regular season still left. And it'll be interesting to see how Gary really approaches it because Gary's a driver, Dylan, that we've seen earlier in the season have some ups and downs. We saw him at Martinsville driving basically that entire race without the front end of his car. So yeah, he's definitely someone who never gives up. And that attitude is going to be important with three races to go. Yes, it absolutely will be. What you're seeing right now are the standings, but... There's a little asterisk that we have to make on Malik Ray because he did not fulfill what was needed for his playoff waiver. So you can basically cut him out and move that red line from Bradley Burke and Steve Durham down to below Steve Durham. That is where the points are as of right now. And I've got to say, this will be uh, pretty ferocious to see if we've got any other first-time winners this season so far. And I know that Michael Loria had an absolutely fantastic run. And Arjun, I think you're uh, going to love talking to Michael right here. Congratulations, Michael. You got a second-place finish. Uh, it's nice to be talking to you guys, but man, I'm getting tired of talking to you from second place. <laughs> yeah, it's been an interesting season for you, Michael, because second in the point standings, but like you say, no win just yet. So, you know, you're solidly in that playoff contention, but, you know, as you approach these final races and you head towards that playoff run, are you a little bit worried that you just need to get that little bit more luck and get that first win of the season? I, I actually do have one win. It was it was earlier in Homestead, but that's my only win of the season. And I, I really am trying to go for more wins just because of racing against guys like Andrew and Daniel, or they have multiple wins this season. It's going to seat me further down for that first round. So I'm still treating it like I don't have a win yet. And that's probably a smart way to approach it because that first round, Darlington, Richmond, and Bristol, well, you know, nothing's guaranteed at any of those tracks, right? So, I mean, you, you definitely need to be in a stronger position than, than you maybe are in right now. So you go to Michigan and then the Daytona Road and Oval courses. What's your approach going to be in the next few weeks? Well, usually at Michigan, I've had pretty good speed, but I've had awful luck. But uh, I got to say this year, I, I've been able to consistently finish up front in the top five. So I'm hoping that luck will continue. Um, but I'm really looking forward to going to the uh, Daytona road course. I'm, I'm glad that we're going to that versus Watkins Glen, where I've kind of struggled with speed in recent years. So I've run a few of the 24 hour of Daytona races, and I'm really familiar with that course. And I just think with how these cars handle on the road courses, especially with the 750 horsepower and that uh, smaller spoiler, it, it's really going to put things in the driver's hands. So I feel like that's actually going to be a pretty good shot for me to contend for a win. Yeah, and unlike the real-life cup drivers, you'll actually get some time to practice for that race. So that's, that's definitely right. That's going to be something much appreciated. But just before we let you go, Michael, anyone you'd like to thank for this win? Uh, sorry, the second place here today. Uh, yeah, I got to thank Machine Products for being on board the car tonight. I also got to thank uh, my flat-out racing teammates, uh, Grant Davis, Bradley Burke, Sam Nieto, and uh, Joseph Tice for putting in the work week in, week out, and, and uh, helping out just doing practices and, and trying to improve the team as a whole. Well, congrats, Michael, and hopefully the next time we speak to you, it will be from the front step of the podium. So good luck, and we'll see you in a few weeks' time. All right. Thank you, guys. And so that was your second-place finisher, Michael Lariah, and we're now joined by the third finisher on the podium, Gary Sexton. And Gary, 
Well, as we approach the final stages of the regular season, you're right now right on the edge of the bubble and you got a third place here today, not quite out front. What more do you think you need to really get secure in that playoff cont uh, contention? Uh, I just have to make races. Um, I feel like the only reason I'm sitting there right now is I haven't raced as many races as everybody else. Um, but no, all, all things uh, aside from that, you know, we just got to finish races too and, and, and get better finishes. I've kind of had a string of bad luck um, over the past couple of weeks where I'll be running top 10, top five, and then, you know, make contact or make a stupid mistake and come up into somebody. And, you know, so I just have to be perfect. Um, I felt like tonight uh, I didn't make any mistakes that, that I would normally make. And I think that that helped a lot. Um, I actually didn't even realize it was a fuel saving race um, until uh, what I thought was too late, but um, I, uh, I did a pretty good job of clutching into, into one um, and still maintaining, you know, uh, space to the leader to where I could um, keep my speed up. So I kind of got lucky there. Um, I almost made a big mistake, but um, yeah, that's just kind of what it is. I got to be able to make the races um, and just finish them. Yeah, one of the few things I distinctly remember from this series was that uh, race at Martinsville where you spent basically most of that race without your front bonnet of the car and you still finished that race decently. So I think, like you say, just a little bit more luck, but you go to Michigan and we were just talking to Michael. He was looking forward to the prospect of the Daytona road course. And you know, obviously the, the real life drivers are going to have no practice when they, they show up for that one. But how confident are you feeling before you even stepped in and done much practice? Obviously, I, I think for most drivers in this series, that is going to be a very odd kind of race and one that requires a little bit more prep. Yeah, it definitely is going to be interesting. Um, I fortunately have raced uh, there in the cup car um, as recently as last year. So I'm, I'm as far as like understanding the course and knowing where all the turns are and stuff, I feel pretty good about that and how the car is going to drive. Um, the, the big variable is just the, the people around you um, and where you are in the field and where you qualify going into one. Uh, you know, the first time everyone, hopefully they just take it easy, but that's the second time around is what I worry about. You know, they're going, when you're going 195 miles an hour down to pretty much 30, it's, it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, but yeah, looking at the schedule ahead, uh, that's definitely one that, um, I, I wouldn't say that I'm confident I'm going to do that well in, uh, but I, I love, I love road courses. They're, they're fun. Um, but I still can't really find the speed. I think the one I have circled, um, for possibly really getting a win is, is, uh, Daytona. I love restrictor plate racing and, um, yeah, I, I look forward to that. And that could be my last chance to get a win in the regular season. Um, hopefully we can we can get in the playoffs. Uh, I heard you guys talking that I'm like right on the cut line um, and I missed Kentucky last week. So like I said, I'm not doing myself any favors, but, uh, you know, as long as we can make the rest of the races, I think that we'll have a good shot. Well, before we let you go, anyone you'd like to thank other than your teammates over at Elliott Sadler Esports? Yeah, all the teammates at Elliott Sadler Esports, um, Elliott Sadler in particular, uh, everything he's done for us. Um, Michael Jeans, our, our team manager, uh, Garrett, Blake, Vincente, Wyatt, uh, Liam, Jason. I think I got everybody over there. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, and, and Evan for putting on an awesome league and uh, all the drivers for having an awesome race tonight. Well, congrats on a podium here and we'll see you in a few weeks time at Michigan. Absolutely. We'll see you guys. There's your final podium position contender. And with that, back over to you, Dylan. Yeah, some uh, great conversations with the uh, podium finishers from this race. Uh, we take another week off uh, next week. We will be returning, though, to Race Spot TV in two weeks when we go to Michigan International Raceway. And uh, Michigan is typically good news for drivers named Thomas George and Brian Chambliss. And Andrew Farinage has two straight second place finishes there. Uh, that's going to be August 10th. Hopefully, uh, 
Evan will have everything settled and we will be the duo doing it uh, from there again. Arjuna, thank you so much for joining us uh, at the end. It really helped a lot, but nonetheless, uh, the crew that brought you this broadcast is myself, Dylan Coyle, alongside with uh, Hugo Louise. I'm going to throw in Evan Pasako there as well as Arjuna Kankabati. We'll see you in just two weeks. What a finish to this race. Eric Stanford wins and is in. Thank you for watching.